tell me, how did you total the car while well, I went into a tractor? No, it's all right, it's okay. <laughs> Those are owners would, would do that um, with their cars. I, I think everybody feels an attachment with their Porsches that you don't really get with any other car. Welcome to Invictus. We've got Stephen here from Twickenham and obviously myself, Bashir. Uh, this, is, this is about Stephen because he's had this beautiful Porsche 981 Cayman S for the past seven years and he's absolutely loved it and cherished it and in no way form or shape was he actually looking at trading this in to actually get a Porsche 911 so I'm just going to pass the mic over to Stephen he's he will hopefully just tell us uh, briefly why he decided to make the switch and then we'll take it out for a drive and just sort of cover a bit more of Stephen sort of background on the 911 that came in and perhaps maybe the information that he gives out it could potentially be useful to you out there Stephen, I'll let you talk. Well, as you say, I've had this car for seven and a half years now and never ever thought I would, uh, I would part with her. Uh, but like all Porsches, um, Porsche owners, we, we, we never stop looking for the next one. And uh, although I've had this such a long time, um, I was flicking through the internet and I came across this one and your company. And uh, I must have returned to it about five times and something was compelling me to keep looking at it until uh, eventually I thought, perhaps it's time for a change and um, so I came to have a look and uh, it was love at first sight I think so uh, uh, as much as I I'm going to miss this one I think it's uh, for someone else to enjoy now and uh, I'm sure they'll have a lot of pleasure with it it's a very very beautifully planted car and uh, they'll, have a, they'll have a lot of fun and as we talked about the other day <laughs> I'm not 45 anymore, so <laughs> I wasn't 45 when I bought this. Yeah, but, yeah. but you know, I think um, I think it's a, it's a car that suits perhaps more, the more spirited driver. Absolutely, which, um, absolutely, which, absolutely. Which, um, and obviously, we've decided to go with a 911. This is the 991 Generation 2. They were introduced in 2016, whereas the 981 came in S. Th th this is basically um, th this was uh, you know uh, produced and sold alongside the 991.1. So a lot of the times when you see people make uh, a jump, they would either go to a 997.2 from this because for this kind of money you'd get a 997.2 or it's they would get a 991.1 because that would be, okay, I'm, I'm getting into that 911. Well, it's the switch gear, isn't it? You're familiar with it. And, yeah. uh, you know, this was, uh, this was a, a step up from the 997 that I had before. Yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. But um, I mean, yours is, is, is it's quite a leap going from the 981s but obviously this 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 was the last time that they made the cayman to be naturally aspirated yeah yeah it's um, a superb engine in that unless in you're that getting car. the new gts's or the gt force yeah um but yeah do you know why don't we sort of get into it we drive it absolutely and just cover a bit more yeah you know. love to <laughs> and the nomination goes to <laughs> just don't slap him <laughs> no yeah. keep my wife Name. You'll be famous doing all these one day. You know, <laughs> you just never know where life starts. Well, no, no, it's true. Uh, what was wrong with the tyre then? Because the, they just looked the, like they had loads of tread. The inner, the, 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 the inner tread. Obviously, the, the inner part of the tyre on the inside must have worn oh, right. more than the outside. I had that happen. Sometimes if they're overinflated, that can do that. I had that on a 996 once and I was coming back from Brighton. You know where that S bend is? Yep. And they've, they've now sort of straightened it a bit, but there used to be trees in the middle. Correct. And I lost the back end. Uh -huh. And I thought, oh my God, it never happened before to me. And um, anyway, when I got back, I, I had a look at the, the tire. And although the outer bit had yep. some tread, the rest was like a slick. Correct, correct. Yeah. That's the closest I've ever been to losing it though. But that was, uh, yeah, I made my heart go that bit. I thought, yeah, no, no. The back end just went out. Oh, this has been a real pleasure today. Thank you, thank you. I'm just going to press this just to make sure that the spoiler stays up. Ah, okay. Now yeah. it's up. I think it had gone down, but it's gone up. So, I mean, just tell us about your 981 came and S. Um, what was that like? You owned it for seven years. What was the pros, the cons? Well, uh, I've, um, I'd never had a Cayman S before, so I'd always driven 911s and uh, had a drive in that and it was just an instant 
appeal to me, that car. I mean, it's just an amazing uh, traction and the balance of it was so different, slightly different to the experience of driving a 911. And um, I just loved it. I mean, it was a beautiful, um, fast car. It's easy to drive fast. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's, it's also good in town like, like 911s are, but there was just something different about it. You don't see many of them around either. And, uh, you know, I like the back hatch, <laughs> believe it or not. It was yeah. quite versatile and there's plenty of boot room as well. But it was, um, it was a car that I, I just, I suppose the experience and the joy of it was just undiminished. I mean, I never ever fell out of love with that car, but um, it was only when I saw this one that, you know, I, I kind of like, thought it was time for a change. But, you know, in terms of an everyday car, you can't fault them. I mean, you know, if you don't need the two seats at the back, and I didn't, um, mm -hmm. and you just want a, a fun sports car, I don't think there's anything can rival it, really. And talking about the two seats at the back, uh, you, you had an interesting story that you, uh, you could do with two seats on the odd occasion when you had to drop somebody to, to the airport. Uh, yeah, that was funny. That was very recently. We went to we had a family uh, party at uh, Lingfield and um, somebody needed dropping off at uh, Gatwick. And, uh, they all looked at me because I was the only one who had a car. And I said, well, I've only got two seats, you know, so I'm going to have to drive to the airport, then come back and then drive past it again to get home. And uh, I felt a bit guilty. So I, I don't know if that was a, a major catalyst for me wanting to change the car, but it was a, it was a, you know, a factor really. Yeah. It is useful to have the jump seats, as I call them occasionally, uh, in the back. I guess it's, it's good to have it for when you need it, isn't it? And, um... Yeah, I mean, there, there is, like you said, it's the odd occasion, but it is an odd occasion because I don't really like having people in the back, but, uh, um, you know, you do need to do it and maybe just give someone a lift out to the shops or to the airport or to the pub, whatever, it's, uh, it's very useful. And you've got a couple of trips planned to go to Europe? Yeah, uh, I, I do uh, want to drive down to the Champagne region in France. It's a, it's a great thing to do for no particular reason than drink champagne. Yeah. So it seems a frivolous thing, but a good thing to do. And uh, I'll certainly be taking this car down um, to do that. And, uh, you know, you get there and you taste the champagnes and you say it's your favourite and then the next one's your favourite and the next one's your favourite. So they're all the same, really, but, yeah. you know, <laughs> you just end up buying uh, loads of glasses with the brand names on. But yeah, we're going to do that, and um, I might even go a bit further afield. You know, a colleague of mine drives to Italy. I've yeah. never thought about driving to Italy. I don't know if the Cayman would have been my perfect choice for a drive like that, but certainly the 911. Because um, would be. I'm, I mean, you, you you are a fairly tall person. You you've got more space here, isn't it, in terms of seat adjustments? Yeah, on this motorway rides. This does feel very different to the Cayman. The Cayman is very much more of a um, What's the phrase? I don't want to say go karty, but it does feel a bit like that. You know, it's very, very low to the ground. This feels a bit more, dare I say, it's saloony. You know, for yeah. for a, a 911, but it has got um, a different feel to it. It does. And this feels like I could do longer distances in really than the Cayman. And ironically, both are the same mileage as well, isn't it? Both both your Cayman and yeah. the 911. Yeah, quite low mileage. It's. Uh, you know, these cars are great. I mean, I've got a friend of mine who's got a 996 with 174,000 on it. I spoke to your friend, by the way. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. he rang up. Uh, he rang up. Uh, he's, a, he's a very nice man. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he's a good guy. I've just seen a 4S you've got. I want him to come and have a look at that. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, I, I, I told him about the 4S. The convertible, yeah. yeah. The thing is, my colleague was meant to have, uh, to have had that listed. Uh, he was, uh, your friend Amun was actually come, come with you today. Yeah, uh, well, I've I've, uh, I've taken some photos of it for him, yeah, so yeah. I'll I'll, uh, I'll send him that because he like he likes a convertible. Yeah, um, he he was he was very much wanting that. He said that he would prefer it in a black color, and I said it's it's just difficult. You know, we can't pick and choose when it comes to these cars. I'd love to pick and choose exactly what I want, but you know, I've got to make do with what's available in the market. Yeah, well, you know, look, I would never have chosen particularly this dark blue, but you know, yeah. until you until I saw it, it was. Uh, you know, it's fantastic. I mean, my last three cars have all been silver, so uh -huh. it's quite nice to have a change. Yeah, and no, I understand. I, I'm, I'm completely with you. And I guess there's quite a few things about this car, such as the, 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 the chrome, the silver chrome around the windows, the, uh, you know, 
almost like the midnight blue with the natural leather brown interior I guess yeah I mean it, I know it's not everyone's cup of tea I have had brown before and I, I like it you know it's a, the default choice is black isn't it mm -hmm. but uh, you know you want a car that's a little individual and I, I, I like this I think it's um, it's different I even put brown and blue on today and, you know, to match the car but, to match uh, the car yeah you have actually <laughs> but um, and it's funny, you know, when talking about coming to see the car, because the last thing I said to my wife, I said, right, I'm going to drive down or around the M25, I'm going to see Bashir's car, and um, but I'm not going to make a decision. I said, I'm going to give it, because, you know, surprised me out of the game and was going to take a lot. And um, I think after 10 minutes, <laughs> I said, yeah, I'll buy it, you know. So uh, but you have to see them, don't you, really? Yeah, you definitely. And drive them. Exactly, you definitely have to see them. You know, th that brings me to my next question. Why this 911? Why the 991.2? You've obviously had quite a few 911s previously yourself. I, ha I have. And, I've had. I mean, here you are. You're like, okay, I'm going to get a Generation 2 991. Well, I suppose, to be honest with you, the, you know, you get used to the switch gear in a car. And the, the 981 had the switch gear of the 991, you yeah. know, equivalent. And, um, you know, thinking about perhaps getting a, an older vehicle you know it's almost a backward step and you know yeah. this was a bit fresher the sat now is different and the screens yep. looks different um uh, yeah the, it, the steering wheel it's lovely yeah, yeah. It's, it's you know they you've got to take your hat off to porsche you know they make changes they're subtle changes but it's always a an advancement really and uh, so so obviously the way you were thinking thinking about it you're like look i want an upgrade in terms of a car, you didn't want to go into a similar model territory to go into the generation 191. 991 no, exactly. I was tempted by that, you know, and, and you know, there's certain familiarity with the layout and stuff. But you know, this feels like a new car to me. You know, I know it's a second-hand car, but it feels like a brand new car, and it's um, it's a nice change. You know, we'll, it's good to have a change. It is absolutely. The good thing is, it, it is it is a one owner since new, so. It's, uh, you know, the 33,000 miles have only ever been done by one person. And, you know, credit to him, he's, he's kept it in extremely good condition. I think, I think, uh, I mean, I don't know for sure, but most Porsche drivers or owners would, would do that um, with their cars. I certainly, uh, you know, you, you get attached to them and you want to look after them and cherish them, really. And then hopefully you pass it on to the next owner and they do the same but um, 100%. no that, that was an attraction to me the one owner by the way here we do we do a left you see the ferrari yeah you basically go into that bit that bit of the road and then we will turn right by the ferrari uh, and then uh, basically the plan is just to join the roundabout back again back, back down yes. where we've come yeah, exactly. it's a nice place isn't it whoa, whoa, sorry. oh shit <laughs> we can edit that out <laughs> it's all right. i didn't see him yeah. there that would go down well on the video, no, wouldn't it? Okay. Yeah. Tell me, how did you total the car while I went into a tractor? No, it's all right. It's <laughs> okay. Um, they, they, because they sit so much higher up, they see everything. They've got an almost like a bird's eye view. Yeah, just so. as well. Uh, yeah, getting back to the one owner, that was an attraction for me. I mean, I've got other friends, and they they're not bothered about six, seven owner cars or even the mileage. But for me personally, I, I, I like a low mileage, low ownership. But, um, you know, I think it's just probably psychological, really. It is a psychological thing, isn't it? Without yeah. Account. Yeah. But this ticked all the boxes. And I was just talking to your colleague at, mm -hmm. at the garage. And, um, you know, I was looking on the internet. And it's funny, you know, you, my wife's watching, I don't know, EastEnders or something. I'm looking at cars on the internet and I kept coming back to this same one. So by the time I'd looked at it five times, I'm thinking, this car's kind of calling out to me now. <laughs> so there was something about it. I mean, what was catching your eye about this car? Your photography, I think. But uh, <laughs> The photos made a, made a bit of a difference. Yeah, no, the photos were great. But, uh, yeah, you, you know, you, you want to see lots of photos, you know. You, it's no good just putting two or three up, but um, I think it was just the overall, um, the colour scheme really looked good, and I and I and the price, you know, is a good price. Let's be honest as well; it's a fair price. So, yeah, I think I think it is a it is a fair price, definitely. He charges fair prices. 
Thank you. No, thanks. I, no, I, I appreciate that you've got to. Um, you, you'll see what your 981 Cayman S uh, would get listed for. That would probably, I think, uh, I think it's either 34995 or 35995. Well, that's yeah. a bargain. That's a bargain yeah. for somebody. But and, um, you know, I know people are like, yeah, you can list it for more. But you know, at the end of the day, because the prices in general have inflated so much, uh, it's almost as if like there are people out there that are stopping newer customers from getting into these cars. Well, I couldn't agree more. And, uh, and that shouldn't be the case. No. And, and uh, you know, the more that look, I, I, I've had a good experience buying this car from you. Yeah. I shall tell people about. Invictus Motors, you. and uh, um, you know, perhaps you'll get more business from it, and that's, that's how you grow a business successfully, isn't it? That's how I grow mine, you know. Yeah, so. yeah no, 100%. Uh, word of mouth. Uh, it is word of mouth. I mean, you you had spoken to your friend, and he just, you know, off the cuff gave me a call. Yeah. And uh, when I valued his 996, he was like, oh, you know, he was quite surprised that he could get, you know, close to 15,000 pounds for it. Well, I. I I'll be surprised if I don't see you again in the next few weeks and come yeah. down with him to... Uh, yeah, I mean, I would love that. Up. You know, another visit always uh, puts a smile on our face. Um, it's nice to see a customer go through that, that journey with us, that process with us. And in a way, um, you've got to trust each other, isn't it? For sure. Um, yeah, I, I, trust is, is key when you're buying a car, as we all know. And, yeah. and uh, you know, on both sides, you know, the car you're handing over, you want it to be... In, Good condition. Nobody wants to pull the wool over anyone's eyes, and equally, you hope that's reciprocated. But I, um, I know it's been a good experience, and I've, I've enjoyed it. And I think for anyone buying a Porsche, it is an emotional purchase. You know, well, for most people, let's yeah, say. Yeah, you know, I'm is. not. I'm I not, think for most people are. For for the majority of the people, it is an emotional purchase. Yeah, it's not like buying any other type of vehicle, really. Oh, you know, it you know, it's a handful that are special and Porsche is definitely one of those you know it's an exciting thing I mean so many of us uh, including myself uh, including all my customers they work so hard over so many years um, yeah. and you know it, you take your 981 Cayman S which is probably the perfect example for £32,000 you know you can buy you know a brand new anything really yeah no it's true um, uh, forget the 911 it's you know we're just talking about the Cayman or the Boxster. Um, so all of a sudden, someone is buying an eight-year-old or a nine-year-old Cayman S or a Boxster for the money where they could go and buy an absolutely brand spanking new car. So it is, without a doubt, it's an emotional journey. It, it is, but it's a different experience as well, isn't it? I mean, you're going to get a, a car that you're going to feel attached to as well I mean everybody I know who's got a Porsche it, it's their special car they, they just uh, have an affinity with it and uh, y you know I, I mean I'm, I remember the first time I came down to look at this and that night I got up at four o'clock in the morning thinking oh my god what am I doing I'm, yeah. I'm getting rid of my Cayman I'm mad you know yeah. um, but but it was the right decision and, and I'm glad I've done that now so I, I think everybody feels an attachment with their Porsches that you don't really get with any other cars. You don't get it. I've had BMWs and Mercs and stuff, but I, I didn't feel that attachment to those cars in the same way that, that my Porsche becomes my Porsche, you know. Absolutely. I mean, it's quite thrilling owning a Porsche. It is. You know. I should say Porsche, shouldn't I? But yeah. it is, it is thrilling, and and they are special cars, you know. Even today, you know, with so many variants of the of the mark, but they are uh, they are special cars, definitely. And I think until you actually drive one and own one, it's hard to impart that, that onto somebody else, you know. I mean, including my friend um, Amon, you know, who yeah. was a a BMW guy. And he said, you know, I, I persuaded him to get the uh, the 996, and he absolutely yeah. loves it, even with 170,000 miles on it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's that, that, that says it all, isn't it? Yeah. But that car probably gives, you know, him more satisfaction than pretty much most other things in life. Uh, because uh, you, you feel connected to it, you know whether that's you that's know. exactly right I feel connected to it I feel connected to that and already with this I'm fairly connected I'm looking yeah. forward to driving back yeah. around the M25 later on and you know you, you, and, and something I think, special I think this is why I wanted to get the tyres done I 
we put the car on the ramp because we had to reset the uh, inspection dew light as we discussed and um, you know we're there we're like oh, the, 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 the tire it was one tire but you know unless you can find an evenly matched tread tire on the other side there's no point really well uh, I'm very um, grateful for you to do that as a, as a nice of you to do it for sure okay. but um, you know it's um it's, it feels like a new car yeah. to me you know, it's, it's a small little thing but overall it massively enhances a person's experience and I think now when you're cornering this or you're going in fairly fast today uh, we have been in a bit of a traffic now at the moment you will see you will see you know what a joy it is to ride that because this should be the absolutely bang on perfect 911 uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to pushing the DRS button yeah. anyway yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. in, in, in case you know uh, you're wondering what the DRS button is there's a turbo boost button there in the center <laughs> which uh, I went to push when I first took the car for a test drive but she said, don't push that button. So yeah. I thought it was an ejector seat at first, but anyway, we know now it's a... Yeah. I think, you know, we should as an experience. There is an extension of this road here uh, in a little while, but I think we should, we should experiment with the <laughs> Yeah, um, I don't know what to, what to expect. Yeah, it's... Uh, certainly yeah an easy, an easy car to drive that's the other thing with Porsches isn't it I mean you know I think anyone can drive one really you can pop down the shops in it or you can take it around a track you know and uh, in fact everybody well not everyone but a couple of guys I know when I had my Cayman they, they used to say have you taken it around the ring yet Steve you know and they were all mad on uh, ruining their tyres going around the Nürburgring which I never <laughs> did do the M25 is good enough for me so well that was another attraction with this car having the PDK I mean yeah. uh, you know I I used to Should love you press that DRS button oh yeah this, this is it this is your oh my god <laughs> you're in second gear 5000 rpm and that's for overtaking I've just put it into manual and shifted it again. Yeah. <laughs> That's going to be a lot of fun, isn't it? <laughs> and I've put it back in auto. Yeah. I'm going to call it DRS anyway, because yeah. uh, for the Formula it, One. It takes a bit of getting used to, but yeah. once you do. And that's for overtaking, is it, presumably? Or? No, 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 for, uh, this is just... Uh, Racing you know, you, BMWs. You can, you, can, you can say it's a gimmick. Um, you know, that's what it is, really. Well, I like the gimmick. You know, what, what I was saying just now, you know, anyone can drive a, a, a 911, really. You, you, I don't know, my wife's going to hear me say that now, so uh, she never drove the Cayman, but, uh, even though she was on the insurance. But, um, you know, they're so, they, they can be so docile, you know, you can just pop down to the shops or the gym or whatever in it, or, or um, you know, take it on a on a motorway and uh, do the national speed limit. And if you, if you turn that dial clockwise, that puts in sports mode. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Actually, that's that's very useful having it on the steering wheel, isn't it, rather than having to move to the Because in the generation console. before that, you, you, you've got the buttons there. Yeah. Oh, that's a, that's a so how many years, you know, of, of, Porsche ownership. ownership have you been through? I mean, it's quite... Yeah, my first one I got in 2000. 2000? Yeah. Oh, 22 we, years? Yeah, which was a... So um, 22 years you've had Porsche after Porsche? Yeah. Know. Yeah. One Aston Martin in between, but, yeah. but that, we don't was talk about that. Was that a Vantage or a it was, it was a Vantage. Um, it was a bit of a disadvantage, really, because <laughs> <laughs> it was a... It was a it was a lovely car, <laughs> but it was a difficult car to own in many ways. Um, yeah, but anyway, it was good to drive around with James Bond music on for a year. But um, yeah, my first car was a 996, which I bought from Porsche yeah. Guildford. Remember that bit up there, we'll, we'll do the same thing. Um, so, and you, uh, so that was from Guildford you bought it? Guildford Porsche, yeah. I remember I was so excited that day because it was the first one I'd ever owned. And um, mm. you, You're good to go. This guy can. And um, yeah, I remember the tractor. Um, yeah, so I got the 996, which a friend of mine still owns, and uh, he loves that car. Um, and then I got uh, a 993. I went, 
bit retro and had a 993 and then another 993 Targa which I sold just at the wrong time because uh, they all shot up in value. Uh, then a 997 Carrera S which was a really nice car uh, and then funnily enough the sweet spot I got a Carrera manual just a manual on smallish wheels uh, just a basic Carrera 997 um, wow. and that was that was, was a perfectly balanced car and the, the, the car that reminded me of that was the Cayman S actually wow. it just seemed to be the right size engine for for the uh, body everything seemed right on mm -hmm. that car it was a manual as well um, and then I, I chopped that in for the Aston the Aston Martin disadvantage and then I got the um, Cayman which was honestly stepping out the Aston into the Cayman was just it, it just felt like the perfect the perfect car and it's, it, in some ways yeah, you, you almost you know want to beg the Aston's engineers to go in and do an internship with the Porsche people yeah that would be <laughs> that would be great you know yeah. it, I mean it's such a fantastic badge as we know isn't it yeah. and, and you know it's evocative of James Bond and you know, we used to drive around listening to Diamonds Are Forever and stuff like that on the, on the sound yeah. system <laughs> until it drove us nuts in the end. But, uh, look, I don't regret having it, but, you know, I would never keep the cut that car seven years. But of course you said. Yeah. They're, they're, they're stunningly, you know, elegant and beautiful, brings in a lot of attention. And I know one of the things you, you said to me when you first came, you said, you like your cars to be a bit understated. I think understated is, is a, a nice way to be in life, really, these days. But, uh, you know, we were, there's not many people that are understated now. A bit blingy, isn't it, out there? But, yeah. And, I, and in a way, a 911 is understated. I know you can spec it up and have it, you know, have wings on it and paint jobs and things. But, you know, they, they, do, they do what, they, what they're meant to do. And, and you don't have to have all that on them. Car speaks for itself. It's a driver's car, mm -hmm. isn't it? Let's face it. I, I do like them. I mean, I look at how Mercedes have gone now, and they're a little bit, a bit too blingy for me. But oh, your one was nice this morning. We'll, we'll turn left in here. Yeah, the, that one. Um, that, that's a C63 S. Yeah, nice car. So it's Fast the, car. Uh, the newer shape, 60, C63. Yeah. Uh, different, isn't it? It just. It's a different proposition I think driving a Mercedes I mean you know I've got friends who've got Mercs now and they, they, they love them as we love Porsches but mm -hmm. I think um, they've never owned a Porsche so yeah. once you get into one yeah, you once would, you get into one you'll change your you'll change your view I, I, I would never own I mean I, I like driving the Mercedes uh, from an experience point of view but I wouldn't ever live with any other car than a Porsche no nor me I think the thing with Mercedes is almost they drive themselves, so you don't get that connection, you know, they're almost too clever. Correct. Whereas I think, you know, the beauty of a 911 is you do feel part of the machine. And and when you compare it with so many other badges out there, uh, Porsches in general, they're not as mass produced as some of the other cars. Well, uh, I, on my journey to yeah. see you today, I'll pass none. There you go, wow. Yeah. So, and normally uh, when I see a Porsche, I wave. I don't know, uh, it's just a thing that, you know, I was once told, you wave and they wave back at you. Oh, so if right. I see one, I always wave. Oh, I remember this yeah. smiley guy in a baseball cap waving at me. He must have been yeah. you now. <laughs> yeah, it's, no, it's a nice thing to do, isn't yeah, it? It's, it's, it's just a thing, you know. It's a bit like um, I've had the old Defenders as an example. I've had quite a few of them. And I didn't know that they have a similar thing as well. Yeah, we can park it's, it's nice. Line, well, why not? You know, we're a community, aren't we, really? And mm -hmm. uh, I think I think that that shows. Yeah. So, I mean, overall, uh, we can just finish off in front of the camera with Andy. Final thoughts. I mean, overall, what, what has it been like? I mean, getting out of. I mean, we've driven for about thirty minutes exactly. Um, so, getting out of this versus your Cayman. Well, it feels like this is mine now, and that's your Cayman. Yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm, I'm uh, attached to it now. <laughs> Funny, just like that, but after seven and a half years. No, it's beautiful. It's a lovely experience. And, uh, By the way, thank you for the cap. You're very really welcome. I appreciate it. Yeah, it suits fits you. perfectly in case you're wondering. <laughs> I'm not wearing it to hide my bald head. It's just comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it suits you. It kind you. of makes you focus uh, when I wear a cap because, you know, you're not looking at 
no things all, all around. You've got it down. No, it looks well, it's trendy. It's a trendy fella. But, uh, no, it's been a great pleasure and uh, it's been a, the whole the whole buying experience has been uh, been a joy. Thank you so much. Thank you. I need to look for your second key. We nearly hit a tractor. <laughs>